This is not the video that I was expecting to make today, folks, but DJI just announced last night that they were opening up the embargo on information about the DJI Goggle V2. I, I think that what happened was they cut off the, the production of the goggle. You notice the V1s have been out of stock forever and like nobody can, look months, and nobody can get them. And then the V2 was like, where is it? And then it's still not here. And I think at some point they looked at the calendar and went Chinese New Year's coming soon. Let's just, let's just get these out. So this video is where you're going to find out what I think you want to know about the DJI Goggle V2. No, that's the V, that's the V1. This is the V2. They're kind of just the same. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. In preparation for this video, I asked my patrons over on my Discord server and I asked over on Facebook what you wanted to know about these goggles. And that is how I'm going to structure this video. I'm going to just answer the most popular questions about these goggles. Let's get right to it. And the first thing that you're going to notice is that they look very, very similar to the original V1 goggle. In fact, they are completely identical in basically every way in terms of the external form factor. So you still have the uh, IPD adjustment is the same. The faceplate is the same for people who are hoping for upgraded foam or different. And there's no difference in the experience with light leak or foam. That does mean that if you have any accessories, like you've got the, um, the Axie HD or you've got the iFlight antennas, any accessories will still work exactly the same uh, if you've got diopter inserts, RHO lens makes a diopter insert for these, uh, that'll still work. The form factor is identical. The big question you're then going to ask is, why should I get this instead of the V1? And this does add something that the V1 doesn't have. And one of the things that the V2 goggle has is something I can't talk about. It relates to some other products that have been leaked or maybe even confirmed to exist by FCC filings. That stuff is still under embargo and I'm not allowed to talk about it. But one thing I am allowed to talk about is that these goggles have updated screens. No, they do not have OLED screens. Dang it. In fact, they have the exact same uh, screens as were in the other goggles, the V1 goggles. 1440 by 810p resolution. Um, are they the exact same? The other goggles were listed as having 120 hertz refresh rate. These are listed as having a 144 hertz refresh rate, but they don't actually do 144 hertz. So I'm guessing that the screen was always 144 hertz capable. They just only run it at 120. Now these goggles are listed as having higher resolution, 810p resolution versus 720p resolution for the V1. But if you're using the old Air Unit and Vista, they still only do 720p. So then under what circumstances would they do 810p? No comment. So then in case it wasn't obvious, yes, you can use these goggles with the V1 Air Unit and Vista. They bind just like before. And in fact, the interface is exactly the same. Your experience is gonna be identical. Another thing people really wanted from the V2 goggles was HDMI out. And at this time, I cannot confirm that HDMI out exists, but you will have the ability to output video over USB to your smartphone. So I guess presumably you plug your smartphone into the goggle, you bring up the DJI Fly app or some DJI app, and it shows the video feed from the goggles. Everybody who spent $700 on the smart controller. Ouch. What about the 1200 milliwatt hack and the FCC hack? The ability to get more output power and if you registered the goggles in the EU to hack them over to the FCC region to let you break, break the rules and use higher output powers. I'm not saying you should do it, but I know that you are doing it. As far as I know, those do still work on the new goggles. I have personally confirmed the 1200 milliwatt mod does work. I'm not in an EU region, so it wouldn't be easy for me to confirm that the FCC hack still works, but I'm guessing if the 1200 milliwatt mod works, so does the FCC hack. Do they have an analog receiver built in? Some people were hoping that you'd be able to get five gigahertz analog on these without having to put an analog module on the side. They do not. 
they do not have an analog receiver built in, you will still be able to use the AV input just like before. So anything you're doing right now to get analog into the goggles will still keep working. Um, it does not have an audio output for an earpiece. The DJI system doesn't include audio, so you, why would they do that? Well, they haven't done it. So no, you will not be able to get audio out of the goggles. Um, you would still be able, if you're using like a rapid fire or something, or a BDI Digi adapter, you would still be able to get audio from the analog module, but the DJI system doesn't support analog. Speaking of what the system does or doesn't support, some people noticed that in the FCC filing for the goggles, it was listed as having 2.4 gigahertz support. The V1 goggles work only on 5 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz, and a lot of people are wondering if the goggles are using 2.4 gigahertz, like to get increased range. It's a fact that all else being equal, 2.4 gigahertz will go further than 5 gigahertz. Um, and I can tell you that when used with the original Air Unit and Vista, they don't support 2.4 gigahertz. So if you're doing your typical DJI FPV stuff, you will not be getting any additional range from 2.4 gigahertz. You'll be in 5 gigahertz just like always. So then what's 2.4 gigahertz in there for? Couldn't say. Another difference about the goggles pertains to the voltage input. The original goggles took up to 17 volts input. These take up to 26 volts. So you can use them with a 6S LiPo if you prefer. However, DJI is shipping it with this little guy. This is, I mean, presumably it's two, maybe 21700 size cells or maybe 18650, I'm not quite sure. And it works just like all DJI stuff. You plug it in to charge it up with USB-C, it charges up, and then you long, uh, single press, long press to turn it on, and it powers up your goggles. Um, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this because on the one hand, it, la it lasts longer than I thought it would. Uh, DJI lists it at about 110 minutes of flight, so just under two hours of flight time. That's obviously gonna depend on your output power you'll probably get long, I mean, you use more power at 1200 milliwatts than at 25 milliwatts. Um, I've used it for as much as an hour and it still showed like two dots. So I didn't feel like it held me back, but the ability to just plug in a flight pack was really nice. And I, I, I kind of wish that I had the XT60 cable, but I understand that if they're targeting this towards that unreleased product that I'm not allowed to talk about, they may be targeting it more towards non-FPV enthusiasts and they felt that shipping it with this battery pack made more sense. It, it would be super easy to get an XT60 to barrel plug cable and use it and that's what most people probably are going to do in the FPV hobby. Hopefully this explains why DJI has not been releasing firmware updates for their FPV system recently. There's been this big drought and I think what happened is they paused the firmware updates while they were getting ready to release the V2 and once the V2 comes out, presumably the firmware updates will pick up again. I only say that because they were so on the ball with firmware updates for the V1. It just seemed like every couple months some major new feature bug fix came out and for them to go this long without an update had some people wondering, are they abandoning the V1? Um, I can't remember who it was who just asked them. I think it might have been It's Blunty, but I don't want to give him credit if it wasn't actually him. And he just asked DJI, hey, are you still supporting the V1? And they replied unequivocally, yes, we will be releasing future firmware updates for the V1. So presumably the existence of the V2 will not mean that the V1 just gets dropped immediately. And if you look at DJI's history, if you're a DJI user, when like the Mavic Air 2 comes out, did they just stop releasing firmware updates for the Mavic 1? I mean, eventually it will sunset, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So then the big question becomes, should you buy it? And the price on these is uh, showing $570 for pre-order. And by the way, if you decide to pre-order it, I would love if you'd use one of the links down in the video description. They are affiliate links and it's an easy way for you to support the channel. And especially on a big purchase like this, the small commission that I get really does add up. So check those links out if you're gonna buy. If you don't have DJI goggles already, then yeah, buy this because the V1 is like, out. Of, they're not making it anymore. If you were to go pick up a used V1 though, I think that's gonna be a good choice for a lot of people. At least a lot of FPV pilots who are not interested in any potential future unreleased products that I can't talk about that would only be compatible with the V2 
But for an FPV pilot who is purely flying with the air unit and the Vista, then a used V1, I think there's not as compelling a use case for the V2. The big thing the V2 has is the output to a phone, which some people are going to go, that alone is worth the V2 for me, especially the kind of person who paid $700 for the smart controller. But for a person who doesn't really care about that outputting USB to the phone, there's not any real performance upgrades here. The performance is the same because it's limited by the use of the air unit or the Vista. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, I will be telling you more about this stuff at a future date when I'm allowed to. But for now, those are the key facts uh, that I think you need to know, want to know about the DJI Goggles V2. If there's anything I left out it's probably because it hasn't changed since the V1, so it's not really super relevant. But let me know down in the comments if there's something you think I missed, and I will be paying attention to the comments for at least a little while after this video comes out to try to answer those questions for you. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or... Like, just, here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.